Hey, what's up gardening friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. Trying not to trip over things while I come back here to get into frame. What have we got here? So I did a thing. I was going through some things and I did a thing. The plant I have wanted for many, many, many years and then I just had that moment uh, several weeks ago when all the stuff was going on and I was just like, screw it, I'm getting it. Variegated philodendron gigantium. Wanted this plant for, I don't know, maybe a decade. So I was like, I'm getting it. And I got online and just happened to find that it was within a price range that I felt was, I'm not going to say reasonable, because variegated things are no longer priced reasonably, but the price was better than what I had seen on the others. So I thought I would go ahead and do a video while I pop this box open pot it up, talk a little bit about the plant. That's all smudged up because of the Lysol wipes. I had to Lysol the whole thing. It's because, you know, the cooties going around everywhere. Gotta, you know, keep things clean. I have my hand sanitizer sitting next to me for after I'm done handling everything that's in here. Oh, this is, okay, that's taped in. So I'm going to get a blade and start cutting the sides. Good thing I have a rusty, but still useful package cutter sitting right next to me, I got my hand over. That just happened to be right where I needed to get my hands in to get this box open. Come on, where did they put the tape? I'm trying to be gentle here. Well, still can't tell much. Oops, I missed a piece there. Oh, oh my God, I love it. There we go, that popped right out of there very easily. This is bare root, so it does not weigh much, and I actually prefer this be bare root because then I don't have to worry so much about the weight of the plant if it gets shifted around inside the package. Just less damage that way. Lots of fluffies in here. Those are always fun to have to clean up and deal with. Oh, 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 hello, look at geez. Sexy little beast. Pull the rest of that stuffing out of there. Oh good, more tape. That was starting to come undone a little bit because I accidentally pulled on the tape. So I need to get this out very gently. I don't want to tear up any roots. Want to avoid that as much as possible. Uh-huh, yeah, that's what I expected. This was sold as a rooted plant in a six inch pot. I mean, that, if this was rooted into a six inch pot, I don't know, I mean, that seems like complete and total BS to me, so. Another scam. Oh, there aren't like a bunch of roots or anything in here. There's like one tiny one, but that's it. Just can't trust a dang thing on the internet these days. Not very surprised by that. Either way, it needs to get potted up. What's done is done. I will be having words with the seller about how they use the word established. But to be fair, I did get this for like probably 70% cheaper than all the others I've seen. It was a very good price. Otherwise I wouldn't have gotten it. But still, terminology, that it matters it was a lie. I don't like being lied to. I was going to put this in an 8 to 10 inch pot. Nice, big, loose roots and things like that help promote larger foliage, which is one of the reasons that the Gigantias are so great is their nice big foliage. But with this tiny little mass of roots, I think that that would be too big. So this is a six inch pot. Back here, this is, it's called Coke Bop. Coke Bop, Coke Bop. Sold by Fox Farm. This is a soil that I have really liked for plants that need something that's fast draining, but still holds on to some moisture. It's coconut based, which is generally actually really good for promoting new root growth. And I've used this on several plants and uh, been very pleased with it. I am, however, going to add just a little bit of compost into this mix. Just a little, just to help liven it up. There's not very much in there at all. You saw help get the good bacteria and fungi going, everything that needs to be there for root development and a nice, healthy, strong plant because definitely going to need that. I mean, would want it anyways, but I mean, come on. I'm gonna pre-moisten this also. Sometimes it takes these coconut-based mixes a little bit longer to absorb water. I wanna make sure that this philodendron gets potting to something that's moist. I am going to water it in, of course, but still, if it's bone dry, I'm really going to have to add tons and tons of water to it to get it going. Yeah, I'd just rather start off with something that's already moist so I don't have to like drench the plant like 15 times. You know, typical potting stuff. Gonna get some soil in here and get that plant in there. Don't want this to be buried. But there's also not a lot of rootage on here to help hold the plant up. So I'm gonna go ahead, put the stakes in right before I plant it. That way I know I'm not going to be cutting through any roots which is what I'd have to worry about if I put them in after I get this potted up. Go ahead and very gently pull this in here into this little bamboo skewer cage. And then top it off. Yeah, look, this is a really, really nice airy blend. I like it a lot. I think that the philodendron should do very well in this. It's one of the few mixes that I buy where I don't really add much to it. A lot of other potting mixes I buy, I have to, you know, make them nice for the plant. 
with this stuff. I mean, it, as long as I'm using it for the right plant. I've never really had to do that. Get some water in here so that all the air pockets can come out and then I'll be able to see how much more soil I have to add. Usually that's one thing. So I like to moisten up this cocoa bop because, or cocoa bop, I don't know how you pronounce it, see all the bubbles. I almost always have to add more in there after it's first watering. See, it deflates very, very quickly. You may notice I have this planted fairly far down in the pot. There's a pretty big lip there. It's because I like to have them in something where I can give them a heavy drink without having to worry about soil splashing over the sides. I do have a hole drilled in the bottom of this. That's because the drainage dish is attached. I don't like that. I tend to not care for it. It can cause a lot of problems. There we go. Very messy, but done. I'm going to need to make sure that I set this on top of something. I was trying to rinse the pot off so it would look nice for everyone, but that's, I'm out of water, so this this is fine. And then lastly, I'll do this off camera just because it's starting to get dark. This showed up kind of later in the evening, so I wanted to get this done and filmed, but I will take some string and wrap it through here to just make sure this is extra stable. When trying to establish a new plant, shouldn't have to do with the plant that's established, but the, been through this already it's good to make sure there's stability in the pot so that the plant's not moving around that way things can go about doing their thing without being disturbed it'll just help keep things nice and stable for the plant while it re-establishes itself into its new pot okay philodendron gigantium do you get should i take the stakes out are those bothering you guys i'll take them out for the rest of the video but they're going right back in there as soon as i'm done recording i mean they do kind of get in the way of being able to show how nice the plant looks that looks much much nicer oh what a lovely little plant one of my dream plants people have asked me many times over the years like what's a wishless plant of mine and i don't really have a lot of wishless plants there you know when you've been doing the gardening thing for a really long time you sort of get to a point where it's like well you know i've seen that so despite the inaccurate description for what an established plant is i'm still actually really happy with this plant the variegation on it is very nice like very very nice actually these are one of if not the largest of the philodendrons as far as the vining philodendrons go these will get quite large they can vine up to i believe 20 feet and i'm not crazy about variegated plants there are some that i like but I'm pretty particular about it. This is one that the variegation stood out to me and I was like, oh, I really like that. Someday I hope to have it. Okay, it's been a couple days. It got dark and then it rained. So I'm back, I guess I don't really need to tell you that except that things look a little bit different. There's a new leaf opening up there that was already sprouted on this when I unboxed it. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about how I'm going to care for the plant. I haven't grown a gigantia in many, many years. This is my first variegated one. When I was a young teenager, I had one for, I don't know, four or five years and I got kind of big and then I just, I don't know, I was a teenager, I got bored with it and I gave it away. And I kind of wish I hadn't done that because who knows how big it would be at this point. I only have just a little bit of experience growing these. Not a ton. See, when I was a teenager, the, I mean, the internet was a thing, but the information just wasn't as readily available. So I just kind of had to grow it based off of what my various plant books said about philodendrons, just like overall. The only thing I, that really stands out to me that's different, and it's not even really that different, was mostly just that I did have to water this one more than some of my other philodendrons. The soil mix for this, this coke bob found with this particular soil that I use for this, that it does dry usually within a couple of days. And that's normally what I want with the philodendron, particularly during the winter time when I have it inside. Generally within about three days or so, I want that top inch of soil to be dry. Outdoors, as long as it's nice and warm, I don't worry about it as much. As long as the soil's not soggy and wet, and temperatures are above, I don't know, 75, somewhere in there, closer to 80 preferably, then uh, that's also something I don't worry about. Now, when the nighttime temperatures here start to drop, which is apparently gonna be happening unseasonably soon here, when they start to drop below, I'd say 70 to 65 at nighttime, that's when I'm going to be very careful making sure that this is someplace sheltered so that rain and uh, my sprinklers or whatever can't keep that soil super, super wet or moist, I should say. When temperatures cool, that's when I'm going to be on top of making sure that it, it has more time to dry. Does that make sense? I hope so. Kind of similar, basically, how I do my other philodendrons. I just remember having to water my Gigantia much more frequently. But as far as lighting, humidity, all of those things, I... I did give this a fair amount of light, but I would still consider it to be like medium filtered light. 
It was never anything very intense. Especially with this one being variegated, I'm going to be even more careful about that. And you know, standard houseplant things. Spring's the best time to repot. These propagate best by pulling off offshoots that they will put up. They'll put up little plantlets along the side. You can cut those off with something very clean and propagate them pretty much like you would any other philodendron. Get them rooted in some moss in a jar, however you like to do it. There are lots of different ways out there. While this is a vining philodendron, they also tend to be somewhat self-heading, meaning that they don't take off to climb like really, really fast. Sometimes it'll be several years before they'll start to do that. So being able to take cuttings from the plant isn't always as viable an option, but they do produce little babies quite often once they start to get a little bit larger and start to establish themselves into their pots. I doubt this one will be doing that anytime soon. Hopefully this time next year though, maybe, hopefully. This will have been repotted into something larger. It's going to have all winter and my growth space to reestablish itself. It's not going to go through much of a transition between outdoors and in. There's always some differences, but my winter growth space is very warm, very humid with lots of lighting. So I don't expect to have to treat this the same way as I would as if it were like in my home sitting on a windowsill where it's like, you know, 70 degrees. So yeah, the care, nothing extravagant. Pretty typical philodendron care with the exception that I might be keeping the soil moist on this one a little bit longer than I would some of my others. Just have to wait and see what the plant likes before making that decision. The only thing that I would have changed is that it, I would have liked to have added some big lava chunks, some pumice, something like that to this mix just because, you know, philodendrons, they, their roots go all over the place and they kind of like to have something to wrap around and grip onto but I didn't have any. I'm waiting on some to come in the mail because I need to repot this big monster in the background. But if it shows up here the next few days, then I mean, I know where the roots are because there's still holes in that soil from where I had the bamboo, those bamboo skewers. Well, I'll know a safe zone to kind of poke some things down in there. Otherwise, I'm not too terribly concerned. Now there is some kind of something going on at the neighbor's house. It's getting very loud. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. The only other thing I was going to add to this this originally when I filmed this video was it turned into a pretty long video because I went into a little bit I don't want to say a rant but a discussion about rare plants and those sorts of things and I decided to go ahead and cut that out because I've already spoken my piece on that I did a video several months ago last winter my thoughts and opinions really haven't changed uh, to sum it up I think there's a time and a place I got this plant because it's one that I genuinely have wanted for a long time it's like one of my very few wishlist plants that I've had because it's just, I don't know, something about it. It just makes me happy. And if that's your motivation, you do you. Where there's problems is when people start getting these things to show them off and they don't even necessarily like the plant and then the price gouging and, you know, the whole situation is just a mess. There really couldn't have been a worse time in the plant community for me to have gotten this plant, but I really, I don't care about that. I, I wanted the plant, so I got it. I like the plant, I appreciate the plant, regardless of whatever trend or whatever might be behind it. This wasn't meant to be like a look at my new fancy, crazy, rare, expensive, variegated philodendron sort of thing. No, not at all. Just a, an appreciation of the plant, one I've wanted for a long time, I got a good deal on it. I have a limit. Like there's certain, there's a number that I will not go over for certain plants because I just don't want to feed the beast as far as cost goes with certain things. It's a cute plant, it's a fun plant. And the non-variegated form of this, the original, the OG Philodendron Gigantia is an absolutely gorgeous plant. And I would like to get one of those too. But when I saw a good price for this one, when it's something I've been searching for for a few years where it would be like a limit that I found acceptable, I went ahead and jumped on getting one of these first. But the regular ones, the foliage, it's big, it's glossy, it's leathery. They have those giant heart-shaped leaves. They're just fun, beautiful plants. And uh, they grow and grow and grow. This is a plant you need to have some space for it because eventually it's going to get pretty big. And I do have a lot to say about the terminology going around behind people selling these plants, like established. Sometimes people use the term established just because the plant has put up a new growth. That is not an established plant. I don't care what definitions are online. In gardening, established has traditionally meant that the plant has rooted itself into the pot and it's growing without the person who's going to purchase the plant needing to do any kind of revival or anything like that. You could take the pot, set it down, 
keep it watered and it would be okay for a long time. Now that's never going to be the case with something that's bare rooted, right? You always have to do some reestablishing. However, this plant should not have been sold as something that was established in a six inch pot. That's just a lie. This is a rooted cutting. That is what this is. But the price for it was about what a rooted cutting would be. A little bit cheaper actually. The only reason I like not going ape over it but i have already contacted the seller and uh, had a few words about that definition because i'm getting really tired of seeing that on plants there have been several plants i've ordered over the last i'd say probably the last year where this is really becoming a problem where something is said to be established and it's a stick with a leaf on it sometimes they don't have roots and that's just a lie that's not okay we need to be accurate with the descriptions of these things because it's fraudulent it sucks that's the only thing i have to say about that that's something that kind of grinds my gears with the plants and the popularity that's going around that's leading to just deceit which isn't okay i mean they're plants but how things should never get to the get to the point where that's going on deceit and stealing and all of those it's, it's just very unnecessary it doesn't make sense to me overall i am happy that i got my little wishless plant here it's going to be fun to watch it grow over the years and it'll be around on the channel and probably not going to be many dedicated videos to it but that's okay it'll probably be around in vlogs and those sorts of things when it needs to be repotted and you know you'll see it around also want to make sure i point out i'm not going to rip on the rare plant lovers i think that there's a time and a place for those things there are definitely benefits to having that around because it can help bring to light some plants that maybe might make excellent house plants that just weren't sought after terminology for rare is another thing i could talk about but overall i think we know what we're talking about there you get it i don't want to soil get soil i don't want to soil the video of me being happy and loving my plant by going down that rabbit hole been there done that i'll link that video down below if that's something people are interested in where i gave my two cents on the you know all the rare plant stuff i hope everybody's doing well having a great day and a great life and everything's going beautifully for you comment down below love hearing from everybody have you been growing the gigantias what some of your experiences with them i have my social media link down below i use instagram way more than anything else and if you'd like to you like the video i'd appreciate it. it makes a big difference for the videos and the channels and i thank you for that and subscribe as well and hit that notification bell that way you know when new videos come out i'm probably going to move this under one of my own umbrellas because it looks like it might be off and on rain for a few days i don't know if forecast keeps changing but it does even though it's not at all an established plant it's still it being a rooted cutting needs the moisture but i don't want it to stay wet like constantly that would be bad don't want root rot here all right as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye